cinematic video should remind the viewer of the high quality look of professional movies. In this video I will explain how to achieve this look with a GoPro as good as possible. We'll talk about the right light, show you the right camera settings, explain the camera movements and show you how to get the best out of your footage when editing. For the shots you have seen in my intro I will show you behind the scenes. In case you don't know me yet, my name is Werner, I live in the Italian Alps and this channel is about GoPro, filmmaking tutorials and reviews of consumer cameras. Consider subscribing if you are interested in these topics and have fun with this video. Let's start with a topic that is often underestimated, the right light. Whether it's filmmaking or photography, the light plays a decisive role. On a professional film set there will be professionals whose job is to take care of the right lighting only. With a GoPro you will rarely film in a controlled environment. You will mostly film outdoors and have limited control over the light. You should consider the following. On a very sunny day, the intense light causes very harsh shadows, especially if you shoot around noon. This will be clearly visible in your shot. Your result will not look very professional and will definitely not be cinematic. If you want your shots to look more professional, you should choose the time after sunrise or before sunset. This is also called the golden hour. The light is much softer and the images will look much better and more cinematic. I took the shots from my intro sequence around 11 o'clock in the morning. Actually, I didn't intend to film at that time, but it was very cloudy and the weather and the clouds looked so good and dramatic that I just had to take some shots. Clouds can also improve the quality of your shot as they basically work like a big softbox and make the light much softer. As far as the shooting angle is concerned, I generally try to avoid filming directly into the sun with the GoPro. That way you lose contrast and the direct sun usually doesn't look that good. But what often works well is when the sun is partly covered by trees. Most of the time this results in nice and interesting shots. Apart from the light, I of course also thought about the right location. My opinion, a cinematic video of nature should be shot away from crowds and tourism. The nature should be presented as untouched as possible. I shot this footage in the mountains near the Dolomites. In order to get to this fantastic and rather lonely place, I had to get away from the artificial slopes. Before I go into detail about individual shots, I would like to briefly explain my camera settings. I chose 4K as standard resolution simply because it provides the best possible quality. As frame rate, I mostly shot with 50 frames per second. I use 50 frames per second and not 60 because I live in the PAL region. When deciding the frame rate, you should always consider what frame rate your final project should have. The best thing would be to film with the frame rate of your project. I always create my projects with 25 frames per second. In the US, that would be 24 frames per second. This is very important in this case. A low frame rate of 25 or 24 frames per second looks a little less fluid, but it's much more cinematic. Professional movies are usually produced at 24 frames per second. However, as I wanted to have the possibility of slow motion, I mainly shot at 50 frames per second. This way I have the possibility to create a slow motion of 50% in post, if necessary. As field of view or lens, I used linear. I am a big fan of the wide field of view of the GoPro. However, since this was about creating cinematic shots, I wanted to minimize the distortions right from the start. In some cases I wanted to create a slow motion of 25%. So in these cases I shot in 2.7K and 100 frames per second. For this combination only the field of view wide is available. Now let's take a look at the Proteon settings. I leave the bitrate at low. I have made several comparisons and so far I could not find any visible improvements with a high bitrate when using the GoPro. However, the file size increases significantly. I leave the shutter on auto. Exposure value compensation to minus 0.5 which reduces the chances of burning out areas of the image that are too bright. White balance auto. ISO minimum and ISO maximum to 100. As there was enough light available and the higher ISO value was not necessary. And very important, I set the sharpness to low. A high sharpness may look good at first glance, but it doesn't look cinematic at all and can't be removed in post. For cinematic shots, you should always use a low sharpness. If the image looks too soft for you, you can still add some sharpness in post. As far as color is concerned, I would normally advise you to use a flat color profile, because a flat color profile gives you more room for color grading. In this case, however, I wanted to capture a snowy landscape with a cloudy sky. Large areas of the image have little contrast. If I had filmed with a flat color profile, I would have lost more details due to the compression. In cases like this, I would recommend filming with the color set to GoPro. Now let's take a look at individual shots. The first clip I used was an establishing shot. The landscape is revealed by a tilt movement. 
I attached the GoPro to a gorilla pod and moved it slowly upwards. I took this shot with 4K and 25 frames per second. As I said, the field of view is set to linear. These tilt movements often look strange with a wide field of view because of the distortions. In case you're interested in what my favorite GoPro tripods and accessories are, I've put some links in the video description. The second clip is a simple pan, whereby I was of course lucky to encounter birds here in this environment. The shot was taken in 2.7K and 100 frames per second. In post it was then slowed down to 25%. For the next shot I made another pan of the landscape. To give the shot more depth I used my ski poles as foreground. Especially with wide angle lenses like the one of the GoPro, you can create a three dimensional effect. Objects in the foreground appear very large. Objects in the background seem very small. This creates spatial depth. Please note that the pan was not made by simply turning the camera, but by moving the camera from right to left. This makes a big difference. The shot was taken with 4K50 and slowed down to 50%. Then I took a shot of myself. For this I attached the GoPro to the gorilla pot again and simply filmed with the bent arm around me. I took the shot at a lower angle. This way the subject appears larger and more dominant. Actually, this shooting situation looks pretty silly. Nevertheless, I can only recommend this shot if you are always forced to film yourself like I am. I shot the whole thing in 2.7K and 100 frames per second. For the next shot, I used this sign as foreground. Like with the poles before, this was supposed to give the shot more depth. The shot itself is a simple pan from right to left, where the landscape is revealed by the movement. This shot was taken in 4K50. The next clip is a time-lapse shot. For this I also mounted the GoPro on a gorilla pod. As for the time-lapse settings, I used an interval of 5 seconds, but the clip was slightly accelerated in post. The next shot is a combination of a time-lapse and a simple shot of myself. First I captured a very short clip of myself and then, without changing the position of the camera, I took a time-lapse shot. Again, I used an interval of 5 seconds. In post, I then overlaid both clips. As foreground, I used the first shot of me and as background with the help of a mask, I used the mountains and the sky of the time-lapse shot. I took this shot on skis. With the camera in my hand, I skied towards this dolomite sign. This way, I was able to make a very smooth dolly. The shot was taken at 4K50. Unfortunately, the behind the scenes shot was completely out of focus. Now let's have a look at the edit and what you should consider. I use Final Cut Pro, but it doesn't really matter which editing program you use. The principles are always the same. If you want to create a cinematic clip, the aspect ratio is very important. The GoPro shoots video with an aspect ratio of 16 to 9. This is also the format of most televisions. A professional movie, on the other hand, is created with a much wider aspect ratio, for example 2.39 to 1, what you can notice by the black bars at the top and bottom of the frame. There are several ways to get such an aspect ratio for your project. The best solution would be to create your project with such a format. We achieve this by dividing at a 4K resolution of 3840 to 2160 the 3840 by 2.39. The result of 1607 then leads to a resolution of 3840 to 1607. I now create a new project and go to modify and select custom under format. Then I enter 3840 to 1607 for the resolution. Now we have our cinematic image format. The single clips have tend to be adapted to the new format. In the case of my intro, I didn't do this, because only the intro had to be created in this format and not the rest of the video. Therefore, I simply added two black bars at the top and bottom. In Final Cut Pro, you could also use the letterbox effect as a third option. Then I put the clips on the timeline in the right order. Since it's a rather dramatic environment, I chose an appropriate song and cut the clips to the beat of the music. Now comes a very important step, color grading. Personally, I really like the colors of the GoPro. The GoPro has a very saturated look, which is great for travel videos or sports and action shots. But this look is not cinematic. That's why color grading is especially important here. First, I checked if the exposure of the individual clips was about the same and if the white balance should be corrected. Then I used the LUT which I created myself. It fits the mood of the video because it has a rather desaturated look, but also a very cinematic look. With the curves, I then made some minor adjustments. Finally, I added some transitions and effects. I'm aware that I sometimes overdo it a bit, especially when it comes to creating a cinematic clip. But I consider this more as an exercise for myself and I like to experiment with new effects.
with this I say goodbye for today. If the video was interesting for you, give me a like as feedback and see you next time.